a championship loved by many, hated by few, respected by all, second to none, second to none. We're back here again for this public service announcement to talk about drugs in America, and we are going to be talking about uh, uh, crack cocaine, uh, trank, uh, and fentanyl, and the opioid uh, epidemic that all exist in today's America. So I'd like to send a shout out to all of those people who have been listening and looking at uh, the Commission Radio Show, despite the fact that we are shadow banned. And I want you brothers and sisters to know that this radio podcast show is the most censored radio podcast show here at Fishbowl Radio Network and probably on Facebook as well because it's those guys right there, right there that I'm pointing to, right there that are listening to this show every week. And any time I say anything that's the truth, they sit there and drop it. And, you know, when I say I'll introduce a topic and drop it, well, as soon as I start introducing a topic, they start dropping you. So this is the reason why I want you to go ahead and share it and share it and share it and share it again. Share it in the groups. Uh, make your own group. You know, listen to us on the podcast. They can listen to us on Apple and Spotify. Go ahead and do that. We need you to do that. Also, follow us on Ed Gray 1906 on Twitter. Ed Gray 1906 on IG. Follow us there. Uh, you'll be able to catch... Uh, previews of what we talked about or what we're going to talk about prior to this show airing. And then follow us on Roku. Follow us on Roku as well and YouTube. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Don't fall for the media, (laughs) the the anti-media in their tricks, because what they want you to do is they want you not to be woke. And I know some people hate the word woke because I know some people say they woke, but they stay in their bed half a day and don't do a damn thing. But this show is about causing you to act. We don't want you to forget. I'd like to send a shout out to all those people who've been listening to us uh, throughout uh, Kenya, the United States of America, uh, Canada, uh, over in Europe. Yep, they listen to us over there as well. Because we have interviewed these people here on this show. And that's the reason why those people over there don't want you to listen in and share. And this is the reason why this show right here is censored. We put things out and then they put a a blast on it to say it can't go out. But we want you to do it. You can't forget. It's unforgivable. And I keep saying the word unforgivable because that is the new documentary that I'm involved in uh, and I've been involved in that uh, well, this week. Lindell Singleton is the producer, and I'm one of the co-producers of it, from what I've been told, because, well, hey, that's the way I roll. But we have the clip for Unforgivable. It's the American crisis that we have uh, in America today. So let's take a look at the clip. Let's roll with it. The most recent opioid data from 2017 reports there were 107,000 drug overdoses in America, and it continues to rise by 15% every year. But we continue to keep strolling by the issue, pretending these people in the midst of addiction don't exist, somehow thinking the addiction will magically disappear and the true problem of opioid importation and distribution will fix itself. As little as two milligrams can be fatal. The Drug Enforcement Agency says the danger is growing for teens because of social media networks like Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and YouTube. Online dealers known as plugs put up drug-themed social media posts that may contain coded emojis to let someone know they're selling prescription pills or other drugs and to get past community guidelines. The teens can directly message dealers through the in-app chat function. Federal authorities say the fentanyl ended up being sold to students at a local high school and two local middle schools. Investigators found there have been 10 instances of students ages 13 to 17 overdosing on fentanyl in the Carrollton area since September. This is America. Mortality is stratified by race and economics. (laughs) History shows that it's only going to get worse and worse for the most vulnerable among us. We've all seen this playbook. Everything that we've seen. All right, we've all seen this playbook, and we've seen this playbook 
years and years and years and years. Uh, well, let's go through the uh, the tricks that we've seen this this playbook that that is a, a, a arisen. Okay, and let's first go back. I'm gonna go back as a historian. I like to always bring up old stuff, so I'm gonna go all the way back to the Civil War. Right, the Civil War, opium was introduced in the Civil War. Morphine was introduced in the Civil War. And as a result of that, some people returned back from the Civil War, opium and morphine addicts. And now we go all the way back into the 1900s, and then we ended up having angel dust, and we ended up having uh, crack cocaine, and we ended up having uh, fentanyl and opioid, and now we have this new, new, new drug called Trank. Trank. It ain't no crank, it's Trank. But you know, when we look at what has happened here in America today, we realize that there has been a situation that exists in America today in which America, which has 4.4% of the world's population, that means 96% of the people in America, are in, a, in the world, aren't Americans. 4.4%, 4.4%, check it out, 4.4% of the people who live in the world today are Americans. But check out how many people are illicit drug users in the world today. Is it 4.4%? No, it's 33%. So if you want to take a look at who uses the drugs in the, in, in the world today, it's Americans that use drugs. And, you know, I understand that some people say that people are massing across the border to come across the border to uh, put drugs into this country. Well, if they're doing that, they're doing it because there is a need or there is a desire for people to take drugs in this country because 33 percent of the world's population are drug addicts. That's right. You know, and this is no nothing that we're just putting these numbers out of the air like it's dust, like it's angel dust. You know, it was Gil Scott Heron who used to have this song years back called Angel Dust. And I think it's appropriate today to play it. Now, I'm sure that some of our people, like that guy right over there, don't want you to listen or hear it because this message is too strong. But you're coming to the Commish Radio Show because we are that strong, the real CNN, because we never leave your hood. Angel dust, let's roll with it. He was moving. And that was when he could have sworn the room was moving. But that was only in his mind. He was sailing. He never really seemed to notice the vision failing. Cause that was all part of the high. The sweat was pouring. He couldn't take it. The room was exploding. He might not make it. Please, children, would you listen? Just and just ain't where it's at. You won't remember what you're missing, but down some dead end streets, there ain't no turning back. A circle, the whole family are listening to the preacher's words. Sis was crying. All right, all right, they were standing in a circle. The family was praying, you know, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about angel dust, how it affected the community in the 1970s, and we understand that because you know, the whole family was praying because we needed a, a, a guidance, a moral guidance, spiritual guidance, because this is what was going on. You know, that's what we talked about then, angel dust and how it affected 
the community, the black community specifically, but it affected everybody. But this war on drugs, this so-called war on drugs, was really a war on people because the crack cocaine epidemic, they targeted people. Initially, they targeted people that was in the hood, in the ghetto, and they made cocaine so inexpensive that people could go ahead and purchase it and get hooked on it. And we, the family, was praying, praying that our families, our loved ones, people in the hood that we knew that had decent jobs wouldn't get hooked on this, and then all of a sudden, you know, they're just dancing in the streets. So they're dancing in the streets, but they're not dancing a good dance. They're dancing the dance of death. Let's play the clip. Step right off into the cash money thing. It's the fifth man. Yo, babe, bruh. Cyrus, black man, successful and shit. I want y'all to meet my new woman, Viv. That's short for Vivian. She good people. I like her. Mm-hmm. I was most fortunate to make her acquaintance most recently. That's my baby brother, Flipper, the one I've been telling you about. Yeah, architect and shit. And that's his main man, Cyrus. He, uh, damn, what is it you do again? I teach high school. Damn, that's right here, high school teaching shit. You know, hey, I'm sorry, man. You know, my mind's getting bad. I gotta go. You leaving me? I gotta go. You promised? I promise. My lips are sealed. Uh, Vivian, nice to meet you, Gator. Peace, two fingers. Peace. No, Viv, would you let two loving brothers get a moment alone to get reacquainted and shit, you know what I'm saying? Where the fuck am I supposed to go? I don't know where the fuck I am. Where you go? Can't you get an answer? I'm just doing your ass. I didn't motherfucker swing away from me. Swing, motherfucker. That's cold. Get out of here. I'm trying to get some motherfucking money from my brother here. God damn it. What do you want to look like a fool, motherfucker? Get away from this shit in your mouth. Shit. Smoke this shit. Shut the fuck up. Give me a motherfucking light. God damn it. Take this goddamn light. Take this goddamn light. Get your motherfucking ass on. You better hurry your ass or you better come back for some motherfucking money. Who the fucker? Shit. Go, 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 go. Fuck you, freeze your motherfucking ass off. Just go. Shit. <laughs> oh, I like her. Mm. Uh, look here, baby, bro. Uh, I'm a little light right now. Could you, like, let me hold some change? Mm. No. No, Gator, no, 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 no. The dancing shit ain't gonna work. I ain't giving you a red cent. What? Come on, you can do me this one solid. What? Would you rather I go out and rob some elderly person? Steal? Well, either way, I'm going to get high. Look, I really hate having to resort to knocking elderly people in the head for their money. But I'll do it. I'll do it. You know I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. You know I'll do it. I like getting high. Uh, I'm a All right, we're not going to do this anymore, but we're going to go ahead and do it again because we want, we want, we want Facebook. We want Facebook. Since we went ahead and channeled Samuel L. Jackson on this, I double dare you. I double dare you to go ahead and censor that. I double dare you. You know where that came from, Pulp Fiction. I double dare you to do it. I don't care. That came from another movie, too. <laughs> you know, that came from The Fugitive. I don't care. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is what we want you to do. We want you to share it because this message is strong. For those people who said to me, they said, well, we don't want you to play that kind of stuff on the air because, well, they're going to say some bad words, and we don't want you to go ahead and use those bad words because it's going to hurt my ears and everything. Well, then go ahead and Google and do something else. I mean, go ahead. But if you're listening to this, what's hurting our ears and what's hurting our community is these drugs that's coming into the community and staying. It's these drugs that's coming into the community and staying. 
And I tell you another thing that's happening. It's not just in the black community. It's not just in the Mexican community. It's not just in the Korean community. It's in the people community because that's where it is. I checked it out. Fentanyl. I checked it out. You know, they have uh, fentanyl labs all across the United States and all across North Texas right now in Carrollton and South Lake. That don't sound like the hood to me. South Lake? That don't sound like no hood to me. But I'm going to tell you what's going to end up happening, that when this fentanyl and this opioid epidemic comes to us like a one-two punch, like an old-fashioned Mike Tyson uppercut, they're going to go ahead and change the script, and all of a sudden fentanyl and opioid epidemic is not going to be something that we need to care about. It's going to be something we criminalize, just like they did with crack cocaine, because they're going to end up having these new types of drugs to be out there that's tranking us. Tranquilizer. Tranquilizer. You ever heard of that? Well, they don't advertise that now, but they will soon advertise that. That's what they do, and they put when they put a horse to sleep, they give it tranquilizer. But now they have that where people in New York City, it's not here yet. Or maybe it is, and we just don't know nothing about it. Let's go ahead and play the clip. It came out that keeps you alive for a very long time. It's called Trank, animal tranquilizer. They're putting into drugs now. If you do too much of it, it take your breath and your air. You <sighs> seen one guy down, thought he was dead. Trank, also known as xylazine, is an animal tranquilizer proven deadly for people, and it's making its way across American cities. Coming more east than it is anywhere else. Worst epidemic that I've seen. Heroin epidemic. That was even worse. We had females selling their daughters, people selling their bodies. But now I'm seeing people doing all kinds of. Crazy movement. There's not no drugs causing that. That's just a person that got a mental problem. You can't blame that on no drugs. I think it's a harder drug than crack. They're calling it a zombie drug and a silent killer. Walking around with no shirt on in the middle of winter time. Drugs are getting crazier. They make you go real crazy, real fast. 37 million on these streets. Almost 30 years. Some people that's homeless go around starting stuff with people. Some robbing. That's some that panhandle. Some that abuse drugs. You go to the neighborhoods, our neighborhoods, the ghetto. That's where you see stuff like that. Good luck, man. Thank you. That's that new shit that came out that keeps you alive for a very long time. All right, that's that's that new. Then they went ahead and censored that. That wasn't that wasn't Facebook this time. It was a YouTube clip we got this time. But you know, but that's the reality what we have right now. We're censoring the truth. We can't censor the truth because the truth shall set you free. If we speak it long enough, maybe people will go ahead and do something about it instead of what's going on now. And that's why it's unforgivable. So I'd like to send again a shout out to Lindell Singleton, who gave me the opportunity to uh, work with him in getting this message out. But I could not wait to get this message out because I'm fired up. I'm more fired up because of the fact of, well, those people over there don't want you to know what's going on. But I don't care because I am charged with making sure the truth is out. I think we have one more clip. Let's roll with that one reported death from the highly addictive so-called zombie drug has been confirmed in Europe as it continues to spread in American cities. It's known as Trank. It's the animal tranquilizer xylazine. It can cause death or parts of the body to rot, and it has U.S. officials on alert. In cities like Philly and New York, Trank has been reported in as much as 90 percent of the street drug supply. Mary Murphy from our New York affiliate has more. During busy travel, we saw the telltale nodding out associated with the horse tranquilizer known as Trank near the 8th Avenue exit at Penn Station. And we met a man named James asking for money near the Amtrak waiting area. Have you used Trank? Yeah. You have? Mm -hmm. We reported back in February that Trank or xylazine was already here in New York City. And that was based on fatal overdose rates from recent years, which showed that the drug was in 19 to 20 percent of the street supply. The situation is still far worse in Philadelphia, where IV drug users injecting fentanyl mixed with Trank live under the Kensington Avenue train and battle a double addiction along with dangerous sores that can lead to amputation. Both drugs depress the respiratory function. Now we're learning from the Journal of Forensic and Legal Medicine that the first drug-related death associated with xylazine use has been discovered in Europe, in Salahol, England. 
The report said a 43-year-old man died with xylazine in his system, along with heroin, fentanyl, and cocaine. The report noted the presence of xylazine in the illicit drug supply in Europe is cause for concern. In the U.S., the Drug Enforcement Administration has been sounding alarm bells about Trank from East Coast to West Coast. In the South, xylazine-related deaths exploded more than 1,100 percent between 2020 and 2021. One nurse in West Virginia is horrified. This is not a joke. This is no, no um, laughing matter. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation. So thank you for watching the Commission Radio Show. As we are about to spreading the truth, I was talking to the producer just a couple of minutes ago, and while we were airing this clip, I asked him, did he know anything about Trank? He said he didn't know anything about it. And he's younger than I am. He's up on things. But, you know, what it means is that it just hasn't gotten here yet. Because if you remember, the clip said it was primarily on the East Coast. And it's like right now, it's like it was back in the day when things used to happen where they used to have music on the East Coast. And it took about six weeks or so before it got down here. Well, with a society being what it is now, I know it probably already is here. And we just don't know anything about it because we've never seen it before. But what you've done today by listening to this show, you're born witness that you've seen it. And that's the reason why we want you to share this, because those are people right there. I'm pointing right there to them who listen to this show every week, who make sure they depress our ratings so you won't be in a place to act. But you are in a place to act. We must do something about this fentanyl op opioid epidemic and change it. And change it because we don't want to succumb to the angel dust that will eventually make us all zombies. Let's play some uh, commish radio show uh, and we're out of here. And let's play the drops, the Howard Scott drops, and we'll see you guys back next week. Hey, this is Cheryl Smith, and when I'm looking for news and information, I tune in to The Commish on Saturday. I got so much trouble on my mind, refuse to lose. It's your ticket, to the drama get wicked. It's the clue to you to put the back of black attack. So I sack it, dap it, slap the mac. Now I'm ready to mic it.